Roy Jones Jr. back again with October Red Boxing. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you doing? Not too bad. Congratulations on that win. How is it a relief that Chris has finally got out there, got back in the ring, had the fight and got the win? It's a relief just that he got the fight. I wasn't worried about the win because He's a very good student. He pays very close attention to everything you teach him. So uh, I was just happy he got an opponent, got a fight, and I was able to get four rounds out of it. So uh, to be able to get four rounds out of it was perfect. Um, I'm glad with what I saw him because I saw a lot of improvement. I saw him try a lot of things. Uh, I seen him work on different things. And I'm glad I was here for a month instead of two weeks now because that month paid off. He showed me a whole lot of different things than I saw the first day I got it. So having that month with him was even better than having to fight two weeks later. So I'm kind of happy that we got a month. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's almost like it's turned out for you know the right reasons. Yeah. I mean, you mentioned about his style. We could see that watching the fight that he looks slightly different, yeah. more slower pace, more controlled. You know, he said that when he went out there, he expected him to be orthodox because that's what he was training for. This guy comes out, he's so poor. So how's he adapted to that? And when he came back in after obviously the first round, obviously he was sussing him out. What advice did you give to him in the corner to go back out and adjust to the South Pole fire? Well, what is going to keep his hands high because that was giving guy the range factor. The range factor is what he had to have. So keep the hands high, kept the guy far enough away from him that the guy couldn't really cause any damage. With that being said, I let him go for about two rounds. And the third round, I realized the guy was comfortable going to his left or going to the right. So I said, let's change this now, make him go to his left. Because you make him uncomfortable, that's going to be the first part of breaking his wheel. Once you break the wheel with the uncomfortability, then you start attacking his body, that makes him double uncomfortable. Now you start getting what you want. In the fourth round, I think he hit him with a mean body shot right down the middle. I thought the kid was going to go down, but he didn't. He, he took it. But uh, he quit after that round. He came to us after he said, man, you listen to what the coach told you. He said, you landed a body shot, I think you might have broke my rib. Right, is that what he walked over and he said, said? He said, you did exactly what he said, and I think you might have broke my rib. So I knew he was listening to what I said. So I played, I mean, shit, I, I, you know, I, I just go on, you know, I do things, you know, that. No, I get it, and I know you don't want to share too many <laughs> tactics. But we, we did see him switch quite quickly going into round two, three, four, yeah. and obviously, you know, making his opponent quit on the stool because, right. like you said, he thought he broke his rib. Of course. So, as a coach then, Talk to us a little bit about how you're able to adjust straight away to say, okay, we're going to have to deal with the southpaw. Like you said, you've been training for weeks for an orthodox fighter. So you've now also got to think on your feet and you've got to give that information, that advice, fast turnaround to say, okay, this is how we're going to deal with it. This is how we're going to make him move to his right or move to his left. What's funny is that God already gifted me with the fact that we didn't know we were fighting. So I had to get Chris ready for whatever. So I made a few adjustments to get him ready for whatever. And that whatever happened to be a softball. But we was ready for that too because the adjustments I made were for whatever showed up. And the fact that the softball showed up didn't hurt us at all. It actually helped us because it gave him more practice at the things we had been working on. So I love the fact that a softball showed up because that just shows me that he can take what we do Boxing in a brain. and make it work on the fly. So when are you going to be going back over to America then? Because look, December's coming up. Mm -hmm. It looks like that's the supposed date that he's going to be out again. Are you now going to stay here till December? Because we're getting used to you over here anyway. In fact, just stay. I'm loving it and uh, I do have a few friends who have spoke to me about possibly doing some things to make it so that I would stay over here. And because of the way the boxing scene is going, it's really something I'm considering. So uh, I do have to go to Russia tomorrow because I have a kids camp that started yesterday. I was supposed to be there today for the first day. It started, I'm not supposed to be there today for my first day, but it started on the 12th actually. And uh, because of his fight, I had to push it back a day. So yeah. I got to leave at 6 o'clock in the morning to go to the kids. Because I can't leave my kids hanging, you know. So I got to go take care of them first. Then I got to go to the World Championships in Serbia, the World Amateur Boxing Chips for Aiba in Serbia. Then I go home. And I got a kid fighting in Yakima, Washington, Andrew Murphy, on November 11th. After that, I'll probably be right back over here. I was about to say it's December then. Listen, there's a queue behind us. You and I know that we could both talk to each other for 780 years. Yes. But until the next time, um, October Red Boxing, Roy Jones Jr., congratulations on the team win. Thank you. We'll speak to you soon. Hi, and thank you for watching October Red Boxing. Like, subscribe, and tap the bell for notifications. You can also find us on Instagram at October Red Boxing and on Twitter, October Red UK. And remember, at October Red, we stay ready.